Okay, so um, so this new form of cloud storage, uh, and when we mention cloud, it's important to understand that we're not necessarily only talking about public cloud. Um, we're talking about software-defined infrastructure either as a service or as a solution that someone uses in-house that um, um, essentially is used to modernize IT as a service delivery. So, um, so one of the kind of the polarizing topics in um, in cloud file services adoption is is around the use of software as a service. And um, what we found is that you know dating back to 2010, when you had solutions like Dropbox or You Send It that were quite popular, what was happening is that users were bringing their um, their own solutions to work and um, uh, we call this kind of self-service SaaS, and they did this because it made them more productive, and it's, uh, of course, natural to expect that. Um, but it was pretty much chaos for IT departments that were finding that um, it was easier and easier for data to move inside and outside of the company's boundaries. And so around the 2013 timeframe, what happened is that a lot of these consumer-grade services started to offer things as simple as Active Directory support. And um, IT organizations started to connect um, what we would still call bring your own software as a service solutions to Active Directory servers so that they could at least ensure that when um, a user left the organization that the data didn't travel with them. And, um, oh, so they're saying that the title slide is stuck. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. So, so, and then in 2016, um, what we find is that uh, as these technologies and capabilities are becoming popularized, uh, the enterprises are starting to make um, kind of company-wide decisions on uh, file services, cloud-based file services, and looking for solutions that address the complete spectrum of privacy and use cases that um, organizations are now facing as they think about how to adopt cloud. So, so that's where CTERRA comes in. Um, we are uh, basically chartered with a single mission, and that mission is to enable enterprise IT organizations and service providers that service them to provide secure file services, all from their cloud of choice. Just a little background on the company. Um, we are quite mature now. The company was founded in 2008, uh, so we're eight years old, and um, uh, essentially you can think of us as uh, shipping uh, version five of our platform. So uh, a fair amount of maturity, both in terms of product and the organization. We're a global company. Uh, engineering and back office is headquartered out of Israel. The go-to-market is headquartered out of New York. And um, we have offices all around the world. Um, we're backed by top-tier investors, in particular Benchmark, Bessemer, Cisco, and Venrock. Um, and uh, if you work with IT analysts, you'll find that almost all of the ones relating to our space have uh, practices or, or research built around CTERRA. So, um, so one of the measures of, of our success is our customer base. And um, today we're powering some of the world's largest enterprises and service providers with the enterprise uh, file services platform that we sell. Um, so uh, the solution supports a variety of vertical markets and industries ranging from financial services to government to healthcare to um, multinational organizations that just have a lot of distributed uh, operations as well as um, a variety of industries that have a high degree of sensitivity with respect to data security and privacy. Um, our systems have been deployed in over 110 countries, all the way from Argentina to Zimbabwe, or A to Z. Um, and we today have um, more than 25,000 businesses that are powered by CTERRA's platform. Um, one of the measures of success is around our, uh, our cloud storage gateways, which is one of the use cases that we support around remote office, branch office modernization. Um, to date, we've delivered over 40,000 of these appliances, and, um, and that number continues to grow. And on the topic of growth, um, one of the other measures of our business is our enterprise adoption. So, um, so today we're seeing uh, annual uptake uh, and growth around 200% year over year. Um, and um, it helps that some of the, the world's largest brands are, 
are validating and selecting Sutera. So, um, so we, we mentioned cloud earlier. Uh, as mentioned, there's a um, kind of a sea change in how people are thinking about uh, the transition between protocols to applications. Um, and in fact, when um, uh, this recent survey of, of enterprises done by Collective Research, they basically went out and said, tell us what your top three um, initiatives are around cloud in terms of use cases. And it turns out that file stir storage and backup are, are essentially number one and number two in terms of popularity. Uh, and then mobility and collaboration are five and six. So of the six top IT initiatives, uh, it's true that Citera addresses um, four of them as organizations think about moving to cloud computing. Um, and so, uh, so that, that variety of, of use cases is, is really a reflection of a very versatile platform that we make that we call the Enterprise File Services Platform. You can think of this as a, a private cloud solution um, that is designed for IT as a service delivery and supporting users uh, and applications in terms of storing, syncing, sharing, protecting, and governing data across endpoints, remote offices, and servers running in the cloud. Um, and it's the only solution that, that provides a, a full continuum of uh, cloud-based file services across the enterprise covering a very wide variety of use cases ranging from um, a very popular topic today, which is enterprise file sync and collaboration, to um, even legacy use cases that are now being modernized around um, office file servers and uh, office backup. We also have tools for uh, endpoint backup um, and cloud server backup, all from the same system. And the platform is designed for uh, what we call unified IT control. And control spans all the way from um, from management to security and privacy. So uh, the platform is designed for centralized management. We have uh, single systems today that manage tens to hundreds of thousands of users across uh, thousands of offices. Um, it features uh, a scalable uh, multi-tenant uh, automation and orchestration system that's really designed for cloud style of service delivery. Uh, the solution is deployable 100% in your network behind your firewall. So the point here is that we're providing organizations a software as a service platform, um, but not introducing any of the security compromises that many organizations face when they are faced with only having an option for a SaaS service. Um, and then finally, um, it's cloud agnostic. Uh, so being able to deploy it on any data center of choice means that it also uh, enables you to deploy on your hardware infrastructure of choice, ranging from services to actually on-premises data center storage, and um, of course, it goes without saying, uh, but the solution is built with all sorts of tools for data protection, data security, uh, as well as data governance, and um, a lot of that comes from the fact that the, the founders of the have their origins in uh, previous security companies, so, so security for Citera is, is essentially job one. Uh, and if you look at the, the platform in total, what you have is um, a, a service delivery system that we call the Citera portal that supports um, three different styles of access uh, that you can see here on the left-hand side. So we're the, the market leader in, um, the top, on the um, topic of cloud storage gateways. Uh, our gateways act as uh, remote and branch office appliances that provide both enterprise file server services as well as um, act as hybrid cloud backup appliances. Um, for roaming users, we make um, applications then, and agents that run on laptops, desktops, and, uh, and mobile devices. Um, these agents are capable of doing file sync and share services. Uh, they're capable of doing backup of endpoints, and um, from a mobile device you can access your files, whether they're on a gateway or whether they're in the cloud. Um, you can um, collaborate on files all just with the swipe of a finger. And then finally, um, one, of the, one of the use cases that's getting a lot of attention these days is, um, is the backup server agents that we have for servers that you're running in cloud infrastructure as a service. So whether that is uh, an on-premises uh, YAS platform such as OpenStack or um, servers that are running in Azure or AWS or services like this, um, file level and application level backup tools that help you back up your servers in cloud or even 
across clouds. And all of that is possible um, through a, a protocol that we make. Uh, we call this internally CTTP, CTERRA Transport Protocol. And um, it's a globally deduplicated, compressed, and encrypted um, protocol uh, that, uh, that allows us to deliver very WAN optimized as well as very secure services um, to any point in the world. And so at the cloud level, um, what we have is, uh, is a, a middleware architecture that is completely scale out. Um, it's designed for service orchestration as well as data management. And it enables you to store your data in um, your private cloud or virtual private cloud of choice. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it's a software as a service or SaaS delivery platform. So it's multi-tenant, uh, supports a wide variety of authentication um, mechanisms, um, comes with security tools for mobility devices as well as antivirus, um, and is built with a, um, a suite of APIs. So you can manage this either via our, our web console or uh, you can manage it programmatically where um, uh, there's all sorts of levels of automation that you can achieve um, either independently with something that you program or um, even work in conjunction with various automation and orchestration systems. We'll cover that in just a little bit. So, so this in total is the enterprise file services platform today. Um, it's a very versatile um, system that allows for organizations to um, to, to do a wide variety of um, things, and it's not the case that you have to buy all of this uh, to, to start. Um, most customers choose one or two use cases and then expand over time. And so um, as we think about how uh, this all works, um, essentially what we're doing is we're modernizing uh, a number of different um, use cases and, re and enabling organizations to replace how they've um, deployed IT services and, and consolidate that into one stack. So uh, a remote and branch offices, what we find is that uh, typically Windows file servers are being replaced, um, as well as uh, backup solutions from some of the legacy backup providers, and then tape and offsite services like Iron Mountain. Um, from the perspective of endpoint file services, what we're doing is we're, um, we're modernizing um, legacy endpoint backup software, such as uh, you know, solutions from um, companies like HP uh, to, um, to providing more secure services for file collaboration um, so people can you know, uh, essentially move off of services like OneDrive onto something where they're in much more control of their destiny. And then uh, with respect to cloud servers, uh, it's not the case that, that we think all of these technologies apply to infrastructure as a service, um, but as people move their applications to the cloud, they're they're typically thinking about how they can um, experience the same uh, level of optimization as well as um, enterprise management with respect to backups and, um, and they're looking for something that's cloud native. So, uh, so the point is that this is one private SaaS platform that addresses all of these use cases from a single system. Uh, and we're deploying this solution to a, a, a wide variety of organizations. Um, typically, you find that they're either security-minded or have a large distribution of remote and branch uh, office, offices, um, or the combination of the two, which you find, for example, in government or financial services. So we have um, vertical specializations in a number of cases where, um, where organizations are, are um, uh, across those verticals uh, we have a number of um, use cases and, uh, and case studies around them. Um, okay, so, so we tend to think of CTERRA as essentially sitting at this intersection of business priorities and IT priorities. And um, we have all sorts of use cases that support this, ranging from um, a design-build company that we work with called Corte, who was essentially looking to um, increase their productivity by uh, replacing SharePoint, which their users thought was a little too cumbersome, and Dropbox, which wasn't secure, and, um, and consolidate their file management into one system that made data easily accessible and shareable from any device or office. Um, business continuity is also a big driver for CTERRA's customers. Uh, one example is the Carlisle Group, which we'll talk about in just a moment, that um, essentially identified that the remote office file servers were one of their biggest uh, uh, points of failure in the organization that they needed to, 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 um, to modernize. Um, we also deal with a Fortune 100 credit card organization that 
uh, selected Citera to govern um, to to govern and and enable the file sharing uh, across over 50,000 users, um, all from their own private cloud. And then um, from an IT perspective, there's all sorts of IT priorities that we're also serving. So one example is a Fortune 100 insurance company that's uh, managed to save over $50 million replacing their Windows file servers and legacy backup systems with uh, a Citera uh, infrastructure across thousands of offices. Um, operational efficiency, so Axa is a customer of ours. They, they, um, they back up servers running across a variety of clouds using Citera, and everything is done programmatically, so um, they don't need to manually provision or manage any of the backups that they're deploying. And finally, um, uh, user self-service is also a big priority for IT organizations, enabling um, IT end users to, to help themselves and to support themselves. So um, having the right tools for the job is important there. And uh, one example is uh, JWT, which is a WPP company, um, where um, end users are essentially protecting their own data on laptops, desktops, and offices. Um, and able to recover their own data very easily without having IT intervention. Uh, okay, so good segue here into the WPP case study. You can go and find um, videos on our website that talk about this. Um, this is uh, an organization that had originally contacted us after dealing with problems such as the Arab Spring and ISIS, uh, crazy enough. And so, um, JWT uh, today um, has replaced Windows servers all across their Middle Eastern, African, and European offices, and um, today runs uh, a instance of Citera's portal in AWS, where all of their offices and all of their end users are now backing up data to a central cloud. So if there's any geopolitical tensions in the region, uh, they never have to worry about getting access to their data because it's always available online um, as a kind of a fallback. Um, another customer of Citera's is uh, Texas Department of State Health Services. This is also a video that you can check out on our website. And um, Texas uh, essentially hit their budget limit when they, <coughs> excuse me, when they um, uh, were dealing with the backups of their of their servers and their infrastructure uh, across both data centers and offices. And so. After talking to some analysts, they ended up contacting us and uh, essentially enabled a 75% total cost reduction in um, what they call remote file services and data protection uh, by using Citera. In this case as well, all the data is being backed up to the AWS Gov Cloud and um, it enables them as a healthcare organization to uh, achieve full HIPAA compliance and one of the ways they do that is through our source-based encryption tools. Um, but it also enables them to be a much more agile IT service delivery organization um, by having a service delivery platform at their disposal. Um, so it's a more secure solution than what they've done previously and much more affordable. Uh, the Carlisle Group, I referenced them earlier. Um, essentially, they're seeing about an 80% reduction in total cost of ownership after replacing legacy NAS solutions for about uh, 30 offices worldwide. Um, uh, they put us through in a very extensive security audit, as you would imagine as a, as a financial services organization. And one of the benefits of our solution is that they were able to move to a model that enables uh, recovery in the case of an appliance or an office outage in less than five minutes. And all of that's possible because the data also lives in the cloud. So, um, so they have the benefits of on-premises storage when they need it. Uh, and in the case of uh, an, an emergency, um, users can be online and uh, not disrupted instantaneously. So um, they also get for the solution a, a global file sharing system as just part of the package, um, which enabled them to also solve their file collaboration problem. AXA, as I mentioned earlier, <coughs> the Fortune Global 20 company, um, they uh, um, they started a project to move a bunch of applications to the cloud and they wanted to essentially combine Amazon, Microsoft, Azure, and OpenStack into one cloud fabric. And what was required was a, um, a data protection system that is essentially is independent of any one of these clouds. Uh, so it needed to be hypervisor agnostic and enable cross-cloud data protection. Um, 
because they're a large organization with, uh, with, with big cloud plans, they wanted everything to be programmatic. Um, and they've done so through invoking all of our APIs. And um, CTERRA's multi-tenancy enables them to essentially build secure tenants around every single user so that data can never be improperly restored to the wrong user. Um, so, uh, and finally, uh, I'd referenced this case study earlier. Uh, this is a Fortune 100 insurance company uh, based out of the United States that um, has saved over $50 million using Citera's systems to modernize thousands of offices. And um, uh, we were the only solution that combined NAS functionality with cloud interoperability, security, and um, the scalability to manage such a large footprint um, where it was the natural choice for them. Um, and now users have access to um, files anytime, anywhere. Uh, and all of their offices are still um, always online and productive because of the edge appliances. Uh, okay, so um, so that was a use case where the customer was using on-premises EMC NAS storage. Um, one of the nice things about our uh, our solution is it's a uh, it's very versatile in terms of the infrastructure that you can deploy it on and operate it with. So. Um, today we have support for a wide variety of on-premises as well as infrastructure as a service solutions for users to store and um, protect and share their files from, ranging from um, Amazon to Keringo to CleverSafe, which is now an IBM company, um, Cloudian, DDN, EMC, HP, HGST, Hitachi, NetApp, OpenStack, <laughs> Oracle, Scality software, SoftLayer, and, and Azure, these are um, examples of the, the storage backends that we support. So um, users have really any choice uh, with respect to their, their storage directions and know that um, as they're looking to save money, we can take them down the most cost-effective software-defined storage or storage as a service path that they like. Um, as I also mentioned, security is, is really um, integral to Citera's offering and to the way we think about enabling our customers. So um, we've done uh, integration with a number of different organizations ranging from um, AirWatch, Good, uh, and Mobile Iron, and Zen Mobile with respect to our MDM support. Um, with respect to antivirus, we have today support for McAfee um, as well as um, as well as Symantec antivirus. Um, and from an identity management perspective, we have support for Microsoft, OneLogin, Okta, Ping, uh, and others. So uh, as you have um, uh, kind of a, a broad security agenda, know that Citera essentially can just slot right into that and work with your pre-existing security tools. Um, and then equally important is our automation and management story. So we've, um, we've integrated with a number of different cloud orchestration and uh, management systems, um, not only from the perspective of managing our uh, platform, um, and one of the um, examples of that is, let's say, HP's um, cloud service automation system that is used to provision and deploy CTERRA portals, but also in terms of how you think about managing and deploying server infrastructure with respect to um, uh, our server data protection story. So a lot of our cloud customers are using solutions such as Ansible or Chef or Puppet or um, OpenStack Horizon. And um, Citera's backup systems basically plug right into those and can be managed by, um, by your orchestration solution of choice. So all of this is really designed for IT as a service delivery. And, um, and the Citera value proposition is that we're um, platform agnostic. Um, everything is delivered via a utility model. Um, the entire system can be API driven if that's uh, an important part of your cloud agenda. Um, and the solution is, is a multi-tier architecture so that we can extend file services to your location of choice. And the reason for this is we recognize that not all users or offices or uh, applications are equidistant to the cloud. So having a WAN optimized solution with uh, edge storage um, options is, is important for a lot of organizations. Um, it's a multi-tenant solution that is um, um, one of the critical points for delivering cloud service and consolidating 
a number of different user communities into one system, either as a service provider or as a large enterprise provider. Um, okay, one of the other big value propositions is, is the, the multiple levels of savings that our customers realize, um, which oftentimes means more opportunities to profit, either for our customers or for our, um, our partners. And so uh, the first thing to consider is that we don't charge for storage or storage as a service. Our, our partners do um, that are delivering service delivery, but we're letting um, customers and partners kind of benefit from the fact that we're not taxing them for storage. Uh, second is that we, um, we have broad support for object storage APIs. Uh, one of the, um, the leading ways that organizations are looking to cut the cost of their data center is by moving to object storage. And um, today's systems uh, can be um, built on top of storage that costs as little as one cent per gigabyte per month, and that's before CTR deduplication. After deduplication of anywhere between um, 50 to 80 percent, you can literally think about uh, CTERA's cost per gigabyte being um, two tenths of a of a cent per gigabyte per month. Um, the solution is both um, uh, versatile in terms of use cases as well as the number of tenants that it can support. And the point here is that um, what it does is it allows you to consolidate your systems management agenda um, uh, from one platform. And then finally, it can be fully automated. Um, so we have um, APIs that enable organizations to, from their service catalog or their um, automation systems, uh, to provision, to monitor, and to bill customers um, all programmatically. So um, in total, um, we, we, we like to say that uh, customers save just around 75% versus their legacy ways of, of deploying file services. And so that's the that's the kind of the high level story. Um, you know, our focus is on enabling um, you to keep your files uh, in your cloud and enabling the IT transformation that comes from um, modern styles of cloud file services delivery. It's an innovative two tier architecture that uh, unifies file services across offices and users and servers running in the cloud. And it's a, it's a private SaaS platform that uh, our customers deploy and manage entirely on their terms. So that's the, that's the high level. I'm going to take you in just a little bit to talk about um, the specific, uh, the three key use cases that people are buying our products. The first is remote and branch office modernization. So, um, so we make a product that's called a cloud storage gateway. Um, and you can think about this as a system that provides local enterprise file services from uh, a storage appliance that can be either virtual or physical. Uh, has support for NFS, SMB, iSCSI, AFP, FTP, RSync, all sorts of enterprise protocols. Um, and the gateways also come pre-bundled with Citero workstation and server data protection agents. So it makes it a dual purpose enterprise NAS as well as hybrid cloud backup appliance. Um, all of the data in our, in our classic mode is snapshotted and shipped to the cloud um, once it's been deduplicated, compressed, and encrypted. And um, you can essentially save an infinite number of snapshots via um, Citera's uh, thin snapshot mechanisms that can present um, an endless number of snapshots locally, even though that they may only be retained in the cloud. So, um, so it's entirely configurable, and you can manage capacity based upon your preferences. Uh, okay, so it's an ideal replacement for file servers, as I mentioned. It's also an ideal replacement for um, legacy backup systems and also um, off-site services. Uh, okay, so one of the other interesting things about this is because the data lives in the cloud, it means that um, it's available via a number of different methods. And um, uh, in the case where your connection gets cut, uh, uh, because you have an on-premises full file system or full backup store on premises, that means that you have um, completely uninterrupted local I.O. even though your cloud is out, which is different than a lot of other cloud-based solutions. Um, and that provides an always on edge experience. And our, our sync model is, a, is essentially immune to WAN connectivity issues and provides uninterrupted file sharing avail availability. Um, 
the other consideration is what to do when um, your gateway goes down. Well, of course, um, um, having the ability to get to your data via the cloud is, is, uh, is one of our, the key aspects to our story, but we also have the ability to mount a local drive on a user's desktop or server and um, provide a, uh, a near on-site experience from a storage presentation perspective, even though um, the performance is a little bit slower because you're retrieving your files or writing your files back and forth from the cloud. So, um, so via Active Directory, uh, our cloud mount can be deployed to workstations or servers um, instantaneously uh, in as little as a minute, but we just advertise this as essentially five minute recovery. And um, you can map a drive to any user or office in the case of a gateway outage all automatically. Um, okay, so uh, it's an all-in-one solution. It's uh, very cost-effective versus legacy approaches to combining NAS, backup, and off-site services. And it's a centralized solution, so um, that benefits not only uh, data availability, but also um, central management. One of the other modes that people deploy our, our gateway in is, is what we call sync mode. Our sync gateway basically enables um, data be, to be, uh, the gateway essentially becomes an extension of a file system that lives in the cloud. Um, that file system can be built to multi petabytes in size um, and files uh, and folders and projects are essentially selectively synced to uh, the cloud gateway um, based upon user preferences. So um, unlike uh, traditional NAS, user profiles, files, and permissions are mapped to the cloud, um, and that enables you to, to consider the gateway just an extension of a larger file sharing model where um, certain files can be synced to agents and apps, certain files can be synced to your gateway, um, and then certain projects can be synced across multiple gateways. Uh, and, and essentially, um, users have the ability to subscribe or publish their files to gateways in case where they want local storage and they don't want to synchronize it necessarily to their laptop or desktop. So um, we call this model follow me data uh, because um, files with Cterra ultimately can be um, synchronized to really any point on the network ranging from your office to your agent, uh, agents running on your laptops, desktops to your mobile devices. And so it enables um, an easier approach to synchronization. A lot of people use this, for example, to replace solutions such as Windows uh, DFS and DFS replication. It extends the cloud to the edges of the network in cases where um, users want faster access to data than um, uh, solutions that don't have storage support. Um, and of course, it's all unified, which means that you have one security model, one management model for a number of different um, means of storing and collaborating and protecting data. So our gateway use cases today, um, of course people use them as remote and branch office file servers. They use them as hybrid cloud backup appliances as I've talked about. Um, we're, we're kind of challenging the market today by introducing this notion that a gateway can be participant in a larger enterprise file sync and share solution. So the gateway becomes an, an edge extender to uh, a larger EFSS solution. And then one of the other interesting things is that um, a lot of our customers are now using our sync gateway solution in particular to do things such as software distribution and um, uh, let's call it a file broadcast across organizations. So you can create read folders, read only folders across um, the edge devices and simply publish uh, software updates or um, or let's say all hands files to the entire organization. And we also support things such as booting off of the gateway, um, uh, wake on LAN support, uh, Pixie services. So it, it really is a kind of a software update mechanism. Uh, I won't get into um, too much of the competitive discussion around cloud storage gateway providers, but I'll simply say that Citera is the only solution that combines all of these different services into one system. Um, our entry price with hardware is as low as $1,000, and you can compare that, for example, to uh, some gateways that today cost um, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And um, it's the only solution that's been deployed um, to single users that have over 10,000 offices, so uh, it's quite scalable in its approach. 
But the larger competitor to um, um, our cloud storage gateways is actually Windows servers. It's where most of our customers are coming from. And um, of course, it's cloud enabled, um, globally deduplicated at the source, uh, where you have kind of a two tier model where Windows servers are kind of isolated systems that don't deduplicate their data when you're protecting to um, some, um, some cloud service. In, in Microsoft's case, most often they're advising Azure backup services, which uh, is quite expensive when you don't get the benefits of um, capacity management like Cterra has. So, um, so we'll make this uh, available to, to you uh, on demand. So if you have questions or if you need um, the presentation for any, for any reason, feel free to reach out. Um, as I mentioned, I'm not going to go into all the details. Uh, cloud storage gateway models, today we have essentially five. Um, we have three different uh, uh, systems. One is sold in two different flavors. Um, C200 is a two drive unit. C400 supports four hard drives. And the C800 series um, supports uh, eight hard drives. Uh, the difference between the C800 and the C800 Plus, C800 Plus has two power supplies and can support a larger user community. We also have a virtual gateway that we just announced this week. Uh, we call it the EV16. Actually, we announced it last week, excuse me. Uh, it works in KVM and uh, VMware environments, and um, we can support with all these gateways up to 64 terabytes. Uh, the EV16 initial um, virtual appliance supports 16 terabytes, but we'll be bringing out additional capacities in the future. Uh, this is a feature list meant for leave behind. I'm certainly not going to go through it today. Um, so we'll switch topics now and move to um, endpoint backup. Uh, our endpoint backup software is a, is a simple solution um, that is designed for organizations that are looking for WAN-optimized incremental forever backup. Uh, so it's, it's uh, extremely efficient. Um, and the WAN optimization comes from the fact that every, all the data is uh, globally deduplicated and compressed before it's encrypted at the source. Um, so we have tools for um, both uh, endpoint backup without gateways as well as uh, gateway-assisted backup. Uh, in the case of organizations that are using our gateways, you have the option for both file level as well as bare metal backup. And uh, of course that provides uh, faster performance for your backups versus a, a, a wide area network based solution um, where you don't have the benefit of, of storage sitting on the local network. Um, so using our, our WAN optimizations, uh, users typically see about a six times faster backup experience, which makes for gatewayless uh, backup um, not only possible but attractive. Um, and so it's six times faster than traditional backup solutions uh, and also provides backup assurance by making everything available via the cloud uh, so you can um, experience complete continuity from a backup and recovery perspective um, both via the cloud or if you want additional level of insurance you can have our cloud storage gateways at your local office. It's designed for self-service, so um, all of the, uh, the backup services are shell integrated. It means you can right-click on files and determine what files and folders you'd like to be protected. You can restore from previous versions. Um, all of the data is also available at a granular file level um, level at, uh, via our, the web servers that are coming in the CTRA portal. Um, and then finally, um, this solution also supports the ability to um, do PC migration. So you may want to back up uh, a PC for purposes of just migrating users to another one. And the nice thing about Cterra's solution is that we have the ability to map, um, uh, let's call it file profiles, so that uh, users can literally um, migrate to a different operating system, let's say from Windows to Mac, and um, and all of their folder hierarchy is basically transitioned elegantly. So uh, really designed for user self-service and, and making IT organizations more sufficient uh, and more, excuse me, more efficient. Okay, so let's move on to enterprise file sync and share. Uh, this is a solution that enables organizations to access sync and uh, collaborate on files anywhere, anytime. Uh, we have desktop agents for Windows and Mac, we have mobile, applications for iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. 
uh, organizations can always just access their files and collaborate on them from a browser. And then finally, um, as I mentioned earlier, the gateways can extend a file sharing model and uh, users can publish specific files that they want to collaborate on to their local uh, office storage. Um, as with our endpoint backup software, it's designed for self-service productivity. Users can create their own secure projects on an ad hoc basis, uh, both for internal and external collaborators. Uh, it's very easy to send secure links. So you can right click on a file and uh, create a link. Um, and uh, you can also optimize your email. So we have uh, plugins today for Outlook that allow, uh, as you add files to uh, a specific mail, um, those files can be transformed into secure links where the data is stored in your CTERRA portal. Um, so it's a, it's a very intuitive and easy to use experience. Um, uh, enables self-service. Uh, you can right click on everything, Outlook integration, support for any device or operating system that a user wants to use. Um, we support mobile editing of files and we have a preview server that can um, support today over 50 different document formats. Um, we are just about to take the covers off of a new release of the software that supports some pretty interesting things with respect to um, ease of use. So one of those is uh, there's a tutorial that's built into this system. And um, if you happen to be Darth Vader, uh, you will get a walkthrough that shows you exactly how to use the, the solution as, um, as, you, as you basically sign on for the first time. And you can always go back to it at a later date. So um, really makes it easy for users to adopt and to consume the service. And that in turn enables organizations to be much more comfortable about uh, where their files are being stored because it's a solution that users will want to use and makes them more productive. The sync gateways are a, a very different um, um, approach to file management than any other organization um, can offer in the enterprise file sync and share space. We're the only company that also brings a NAS to the table that uh, participates in a larger file sync and share solution. So I covered that already. Um, one of the things that it does, if you look at this through the lens of file sync and share as opposed to um, an, an add-on to the NAS experience, if you think about it from an EFSS perspective, a lot of organizations are moving towards um, using solutions such as Chromebooks or SSD-enabled laptops or desktops, and these don't have the same amount of capacity as traditional solutions do. And as a result, um, uh, users are challenged to hold large collaboration spaces in their desktop. Uh, and so having a, a solution on the network uh, where the data is still local but not necessarily on your desktop is a, is a nice way to think about how the sync gateway brings value to an organization. Um, also enables organizations to participate in global file collaboration spaces without being concerned with um, a, a user's bandwidth or proximity to the cloud. Um, and it's a fundamentally more secure approach to file sharing than um, uh, traditional SaaS software is. So uh, all of this can be hosted in your data center or your VPC. Uh, supports two-factor authentication via email or text. Um, we have more than just remote wipe. We call this remote data shredding, which goes and um, uh, makes sure that is a uh, user is disabled, that uh, all of the data is destroyed. Um, password enforcement tools by the uh, either by strength or by expiration. Audit trails, um, upload as well as collaboration policies, um, centralized antivirus scanning, and then finally. Um, users can own and manage their encryption keys as well as their authentication. And uh, for enterprise customers, there's no third party access to your keys ever. Um, so uh, obviously a big focus on security versus a lot of the competitive options in the marketplace today. And it's one of the only solutions that you can deploy entirely behind your own firewall. Okay, and then the final use case that we'll talk about today is what we call Cloud Ops Server Backup. This is something that we announced in November of last year. And um, um, we did this for a variety of reasons. Of course, it helped to have a few very large customers convince us into the, the use case. Um, and and one of the, there's, there's a few things that we realized through the process of, of bringing this product to market. The first is that um, 
the knocks on Cterra is that our backup tools haven't had uh, proper support for VMware environments. Well, it turns out as you think about the evolution of cloud, um, in cases where you're deploying servers in Azure or AWS or um, SoftLayer or any variety of uh, cloud infrastructures, if you're using their virtual environments, then you're most often not able to get access to the hypervisor, which means that hypervisor level backup tools don't even play. Um, second is, as people think about deduplication, it's not like you can ship a data domain system to Amazon and ask them to host it for you. It doesn't work like that. So the new levels of operational efficiencies that the cloud vendors have mean that they're not, um, they're not co-location companies for backup appliances and they don't offer um, data deduplication services themselves. So people have to think about dedupe in a different way to achieve the same backup economics. And then third is um, all the legacy backup tools weren't built from the ground, ground up for the cloud. So um, very often they're lacking in the APIs that organizations want to programmatically deploy and manage backups. Uh, if you're deploying in Amazon today, you have some choices, and we use them as just an example, um, just because they're the 800-pound gorilla in the cloud space. Um, and you have some alternatives, but they're usually less than ideal. So you can use things such as EBM, EBS volume snapshots, um, uh, which are quite complex to script. Uh, they don't offer global deduplication, and um, they will kind of um, contain your backups in the AWS cloud. Makes sense for Amazon, but doesn't necessarily always make sense for um, certain customers that want a new style of offsite out of the, the cloud that they're operating their applications in. Um, Second, you have uh, kind of desktop level tools that are being repurposed for, um, for cloud servers. Um, these don't offer the levels of orchestration, automation, or enterprise management that organizations have um, typically experienced with their legacy backup software. Um, they don't have deduplication and they don't have support for multi-cloud backup um, through WAN optimization. So not necessarily appropriate for enterprise use cases. And then finally, you have um, everyday uh, enterprise backup software that is now starting to be um, sold into cloud environments. If uh, um, a good portion of them don't have object storage connectors, so you need to deploy a gateway. They do have object storage connectors. They're still fairly complex to set up, um, pretty expensive, and um, uh, have very poor what I'll call deduplication server to client ratios. So you actually end up spending a lot on infrastructure. So um, so we make a solution for cloud ops server backup. Uh, it's an enterprise level system that is designed for file level backup. Um, that saves you about 40% versus volume snapshots. <clears throat> it's an incremental forever backup architecture, so uh, much faster than full snapshot based solutions. It's um, source based, deduplicated and compressed, which means that it's appropriate for um, cross-cloud and WAN-based backup um, where you don't need to keep your storage resident with the applications that you're protecting. Um, so it's designed for a multi-cloud era where customers want to save money, they want to back up faster, and they want to eliminate the risk or dependency of deploying in any one cloud. Um, it's an enterprise solution, so there's all sorts of enterprise-grade management utilities as well as application integrations. Today we support a, a wide range of Windows applications ranging from Hyper-V to SQL Server to Exchange to Active Directory and SharePoint. Uh, we will be announcing other uh, applications that we have application-specific backup software for in the future. One of the values that we bring to the table is something that we call backup templates. Um, and our templates are, I think of them as um, predefined policies and provisioning rules that are set uh, for uh, users or for applications that show themselves on the network. Um, and essentially we can define backups by, um, or backup policies by uh, the server operating system, the machine names, the applications that are running in that server, or maybe the region that that server is running in. And um, these templates define where the data gets backed up to. They define um, the schedules that you would invoke for um, the regularity of your backups, and can also throttle throughput in cases where you want to keep uh, the load on the network light. So this is an example of where uh, a SQL Server kind of um, via Active Directory gets deployed into an environment. Uh, your backup templates would automatically identify that this is a server that you want to attach a backup to automatically. 
Uh, and in this case, we're saying, you know, maybe you back up to your east region uh, every 24 hours without any throttling. So that's um, one unique uh, approach to backup that CTR brings to the table. Um, another big focus for us is really enabling um, cloud style of system deployment and operation. So as I mentioned earlier, we have support for a variety of orchestration and automation systems. And as you build your cloud fabric, essentially backups can be automatically um, attached and, and provisioned um, using these automation and orchestration tools. It allows you to enroll thousands of agents across clouds in just a single click. Um, you can set triggers via these tools for backing up and restoring um, applications. And um, it also allows you to do real-time polling of your backup status. So it's really designed for cloud operations where um, every single aspect of backup provisioning and management is, um, is done programmatically using the tools that you're using otherwise for uh, server orchestration and management. Excuse me. Uh, one of the other, um, oops, excuse me. One of the other big focuses for us is is enabling organizations to um, to deploy a multi-tenant environment um, that that does a few things, uh, but essentially it, it enables organizations to to address the needs of a wide variety of users within an environment or within an organization without having to deploy bespoke or dedicated backup systems for them. And with Cterra, um, user data as well as encryption is isolated um, at the user level and so that other users or admins don't have access to um, backup data, which is uh, oftentimes quite sensitive. And so it really transforms how people think about backup security and it provides the comfort and compliance of dedicated infrastructure services without the overhead of managing multiple systems. And so, um, so we think about this solution as being much more optimized for the cloud, much more efficient, and, um, uh, and, and capable of being deployed without any manual intervention. Um, one of the other questions that we routinely get asked, because we're uh, a big Amazon partner, is, is, how, uh, is how we compare to solutions such as EBS volume snapshots. And of course, there's a lot of differences with respect to the, the types of applications that you can back up. Um, considering that we're file level and they are volume level, um, and also the optimizations that we bring to the table. Um, and what we find is that these two solutions can often coexist in a user environment where um, an organization may keep one day of backups and EBS volume snapshots for operational backup and recovery, but for retention and compliance, they may also add Citera as their long-term backup solution. So, um, so we find that uh, this kind of this paradigm exists across a number of different cloud platforms that we deploy on, and um, and in fact we're we're complementary to each other but different. Um, and one of the big differences is actually the cost. So because we support solutions such as S3 infrequent access, that means that we're able to store pre-deduplication. Uh, um, anywhere from uh, I think it's somewhere today around 10 percent the cost of an EBS snapshot. And then if you add the file level granularity, if you add deduplication and compression, um, the cost delta can be about 1 to 30, uh, the cost of what I'll call operational style snapshots. So as I mentioned, both are, are, are required in, um, in, in modern cloud environments, but what we're doing is we're enabling long-term uh, compliance and data retention with a, a cloud modern solution. So, um, so that's the the.